Hey, I'm Nate Savage, and welcome to this guitar lesson where we're gonna take a look at how to read sheet music on the guitar. Now, this is a bigger topic that can be covered in one lesson, but what we're gonna do is take a look at some of the common elements that you're gonna see on a piece of sheet music, and then I'm gonna go into detail about some of the more important ones that you need to understand. So let's just get started with some of the more common elements that you're gonna see when you pick up a piece of sheet music for the guitar. The first element that I wanna to talk to you about is the staff, and all a staff is, it's the entire thing that holds all the notation, all the lines and spaces, everything that you're gonna see when you look at a piece of sheet music. Now there are several different clef symbols that specify the names of the lines and spaces you're gonna be looking at when you see a piece of sheet music. Now, all guitar music is written on the treble clef or G clef, and if you look at a treble clef symbol, it looks a lot like a G number one, and the little circle part that looks like a G also circles right around the line that's named the G line, and that's how you know you're looking at a piece of guitar sheet music. When you look at a staff on a piece of guitar sheet music, it's gonna be made up of five lines and four spaces. We'll get into this more later, but just be aware that there are five lines and four spaces on a piece of guitar sheet music. Now, the lines and spaces on a piece of guitar sheet music only go from this E right here to this F. So you're gonna see lines above and below the staff. Those are called ledger lines, and they just are placeholders for notes that are above and below those notes that I just showed you. Key signatures occur at the beginning of a piece of sheet music normally, and they're just a quick way of telling you what key a particular piece of music is in. They're usually made up of either no sharps and flats or some sharps and some flats, and again, they just tell you what key you're in. Now, Accidentals can occur throughout a piece of sheet music, and all accidental is, it's either a sharp sign, a flat sign, or a natural sign. Another element that usually occurs at the first part of a piece of sheet music is a time signature, and we'll talk more about this one later we get into details about how to interpret time signatures. The next element we're going over is a bar, and all a bar is, it's a horizontal line throughout the staffs that kind of divide up the sheet music into little regions, and we'll talk more about that when we get to time signatures as well. The next element that I want to make you aware of are just some examples of some notes. We'll get into this more when we talk about time signatures, but here's an example of some whole notes, half notes, and quarter notes. Now along those same lines, you have rests too, so you need to be familiar with what they look like. Here's an example of some whole rests, half rests, and quarter rests. Those just tell you kind of when to lay out or not play. The next element that we're gonna go over is called a tie. All a tie is is a little arc that kind of connects two notes together and glues them together and make their duration tied together. A slur kind of looks like a tie, but it's not, it's different. It's an indicator that you should play something with hammer-ons and pull-offs on the guitar or legato if you're playing another instrument. And again, it just looks like an arc that goes over a few notes. The last little element that I wanna go over with you is a repeat sign. And all it is, it's two dots at the end of a bar or at the end of a series of bars that tell you, hey, when you see the sign, go back to the first two dots that you saw and just play everything again or repeat everything again. Those are the basic elements that you're gonna see in standard notation. There's a lot more things that you could see, but those are the most common ones. Now I wanna go into detail with you about some of the more important elements that you need to know about. Let's start with the names of the lines and spaces. If you're reading a piece of guitar sheet music, you're going to be looking at a treble clef, and the staff has five lines and four spaces, right? What you're going to want to do is memorize the names of the lines and spaces, and a really easy way to do this is just with an acronym, and probably the one that everybody knows or that everybody experiences when they're learning this for the lines is every good boy does fine. That's E-G-B-D-F. Those are the names of the lines for the staff. Now, the names of the spaces are a little bit easier to memorize for me just because it spells out a word, and that word is face, F-A-C-E. Now, there's another way to look at this. If you start on the lowest E, that bottom line, and go up to the next space, it just goes in alphabetical order, so you have E, F, G, A, B, C, D, and when you get to the top space, it starts over again on E. Now, as I mentioned earlier, those notes, that E, the bottom line, to the top line, to that F, are as high and low as the notes on the staff go. So what we have to do is work with the ledger lines if we want notes below or above that. So, for example, if you have two lines below the staff, that's gonna be an A note, this low A string right here. 
And you have to memorize those just like you memorize the names and the lines and spaces too. Let's get into a little bit more detail about key signatures. If you remember, I just said a key signature was a series of sharps or flats or the like thereof at the beginning of a piece of music that tells you what key you're in. If you look at this example, you're gonna see two sharps and that's the key signature for D major. And I know that just because over time I've memorized that two sharps is a key signature for D major, right? But those two sharps are F sharp and C sharp. And if you look at those sharps on that key signature, the first sharp is on the F line, the top F line. And then the second sharp is on the third space or the C. And what that's telling you is that anytime you see a note on the F line or the C line there, or any C or F throughout the entire piece of music, that you're gonna sharp those and make them, instead of an F and a C, you're gonna make them an F sharp and a C sharp. Let me explain time signatures to you real quick. I'm gonna give you a kind of an easy way to interpret a time signature if you're not used to doing this. Now, the most common time signature you're probably gonna see is 4-4 four, four time, and you're gonna maybe thinking, what in the world does that mean? But let me give you this little shortcut. The top number in a time signature tells you how many beats or pulses that there are in a measure. So to help you kind of get an idea for this, you've probably heard a drummer count off a song. One, two, three, four. That's the pulse or the beat of that particular song that's in 4-4 four, four time. That top number says four, so there's four beats per measure of music. Now we need to take a look at what the bottom number means and how to interpret it. And the easiest way to do this is to look at your time signature, take the top number away, just get rid of it and replace it with a one, and think what does that leave you with. In this case, it would leave you with one over four or one fourth, or how else do we interpret that? At a quarter, right? So that is gonna tell you what note gets the beat. In this case, it would be a quarter note. So that pulse you're hearing, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, is a quarter note, or one over four, one fourth, one quarter note, right? Let's go over one more time signature just so you can firm up the idea of how to interpret them in your head. Another really common time signature that you're gonna see is six, eight time. Now, remember the top number is telling you how many beats are in one bar or one measure. So in this case, we're gonna have six beats per measure. Now we need to interpret the bottom number of this time signature. And remember to do that, just get rid of the top number, get rid of the six, and replace it with a one. That leaves you with one eighth or an eighth. And that tells you that the eighth note, or an eighth note, is what gets the beat in this time to signature. So you're gonna have six eighth notes per measure. Now if you remember we talked about bars earlier, how they're just a horizontal line that kind of divides up the sheet music. And all this does is divides the sheet music into bars or measures of whatever value or denomination of notes that the time signature dictates. So if you have four four time, each bar or measure is gonna be four beats of four quarter notes. Let's go into a little bit more detail about the notes that you're gonna see when you pick up a piece of sheet music. And for this example, we're gonna go back into our four four time signature. So that means that we have four quarter notes in each measure. Now, take a look at this graphic. The first measure has one whole note. A whole note, it just looks like an empty or hollow circle. And that's kind of like a dollar in four four time. That's gonna take up the entire measure or all four beats. Now if you look at the next measure, you're gonna see half notes. And those just look like whole notes with little stems on them. And just imagine that you cut the whole note in half. And that means that each half note is gonna get two beats to take up one full measure. The next measure has four quarter notes in them. And imagine that you took those two half notes in measure two and cut each one of them in half. You would end up with four quarter notes. So you can fit four quarter notes in one measure a four four time. They just look like a filled in circle with a stem. Now along those same lines, we have rests that tell us when to lay out or not play. A whole rest that takes up one full measure of four four time looks like a little rectangle hanging from one of the lines. Now, if you cut that whole rest in half, you would end up with two half rests. And a half rest, if you look at measure two, looks like just a little rectangle sitting on top of the line instead of hanging from the line. If you cut those two half rests in half again, you would end up with quarter rests. And if you look at measure three, you see the little squiggly symbol. Those are quarter rests, and those each take up one beat. The last element of rhythm that we need to go over in this lesson is a dot. If you see a dot next to the note, all that's telling you to do is to take half of that note's value 
and tag it onto that note. So if you see a half note that usually takes up two beats, what you would do if you saw a dot next to it is take another beat or one beat and tag it onto it. So that half note that normally lasts just two beats would now last three beats. One of the hardest things about reading music on the guitar is there are multiple places to play almost everything you could play. For example, if you play this A note right here on the second fret of the G string, you could play that exact same note here on the seventh fret of the D string or the twelfth fret of the A string or even up here on the low E string, right? And sometimes it can be hard to know where you're exactly supposed to play this because it's not always specified on the sheet music you're looking at. But sometimes it is specified. If the person who wrote the sheet music wants you to play something in a specific location or a specific position on the guitar, it'll be notated. Like, for example, if somebody wanted you to play this A right here, on the third string, on the G string, it would have a three with a circle around it. And that's how you would know, hey, he wants me to play, you know, this A on the third string right here as opposed to this A on the fourth string right here. Another thing that you're going to need to be aware of is which fingers to use sometimes if you're playing a more complex piece or if the person that wrote the sheet music has a specific fingering worked out already. You will see just a number by the note. For example, you could see a two by this A right here, and that will let you know you're supposed to use your second finger to play that A note. That's it for this lesson on how to read sheet music. Now, let me just tell you, you don't have to learn how to read music on guitar. There are a lot of great guitar players out there that never do, but if this interests you, I would really encourage you to get at least a basic standard working knowledge of how to read sheet music on the guitar. It can open a lot of doors for you and make things a lot easier. The guitar system has an entire section on how to read sheet music with tons of exercises and things like that. Thanks for watching. If you like this video lesson and you want to see more like this, just leave a comment below or like the video. I just launched a free brand new guitar lesson series you can get right now on guitarlessons.com slash free dash series. I'll see you there.